Hi everybody, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Monty um, and I've just finished marking all the uh, digital stories uh, and I was just having a chat to Ken the other day and he's asked me if I could just uh, make a, a really quick video just to give you a bit of feedback, let you know how I went and how you went um, and so uh, I'm just going to start by saying that uh, um, I was actually pretty impressed with the quality of the videos. A lot of them were really put together well, had a strong narrative, dealt with the main concepts, and, and uh, some of them were extremely creative and, um, you know, quite a pleasure to watch. Um, so, yeah, I just want you to know that I, I really appreciate the effort that a lot of you put in. I could actually see a lot of the effort uh, that a lot of you put in, and uh, it, it made my job a lot easier. Of course, that also meant that it raised the bar a little bit, but uh, um, uh, in the end, I think everybody just performed uh, pretty well with those, with those videos. Uh, with regards to the essays, um, I think one of the issues that I spoke to Ken about was that a lot of you sort of let yourself down with the essay. Whilst you put together a really nice video, a lot of you, um, uh, you know, didn't necessarily engage with the concepts in a in a well expressed academic way. Now, uh, um, uh, at the end of the day. Um, uh, the digital story, as I say, is really well put together. It's really good to have that narrative, but ultimately the paper was the more academic piece of work. And, um, you know, uh, it, it really is about um, providing the most well-informed, most persuasive argument to... to um, uh, and so in that regard, expression is really important. And so uh, I think it's really a, a, a good idea the next time you're writing something like this um, is to just sort of take the time once you've written the paper, to just go away from it, come back to it, and read it again, and draft it again, um, uh, and just read it out aloud, read it out uh, uh, to somebody else, get somebody else to have a look at it, for example, and just see if all the ideas flow in together smoothly, uh, and if it makes sense when it's when it's written out. And it's a really important um, skill to develop, both as a as a student and as a teacher, to be able to have a grasp of um, of written communication. But it also just makes your work more persuasive. It makes it, if you if you are bringing in concepts um, and explaining them clearly and building on ideas in a logical way, where one thing leads to the next uh, in a smooth, flowing form of communication, then it just makes the quality of written work just easier to read, more of a pleasure to read, and much more um, uh, um, uh, accessible for the reader. And that's really important that um, that that your writing is accessible and it is clear and uh, you know, as I said, the, the, the digital stories have these great narratives, so you can obviously put words together in a way that, that flows smoothly and, and, and comes together um, uh, logically and persuasively. So I just encourage you to take that skill and, and, and use it in the written form and don't get too caught up in trying to sound academic -y or sound intellectual because often what that does is it makes your work convoluted and hard to understand. So. Um, the biggest piece of advice I can offer you for written stuff is just don't submit your first draft. Take the time to read it out aloud and see if it makes sense and make sure that all the ideas build on each other in a logical way. You should always define key terms and concepts so, so that we know you understand them. Um, obviously, we know what deficit discourse is and virtual school bags are and turning around pedagogies are. And you've obviously just talked about them in your videos, but in the paper, we want to see that you understand them. So your ability to explain that is really important as well. Um, I won't grab it on too much about that sort of stuff. As I say, yeah, the, the videos were great. Uh, I think you guys, a, a lot of you can, not everybody, but a lot of you can do a bit of work on your written expression, um, being careful not to just drop quotes in or just paraphrase and cut and paste. Like that's really obvious when it comes through. Um, so uh, if, if a lot of you did a lot of good research, um, but then didn't, put the material together in a smooth flowing way. Uh, some of you didn't actually do enough research, so we needed to get four academic sources um, uh, and you know in and we wanted to see independent research, so research that went beyond just the core readings. Um, so when you put all that together, a, a good good writing and good research um, and good drafting makes for a good written piece of work. So keep that in mind for the next time. Apart from that, with regards to the, uh, the, the other kinds of feedback that you'll get, uh, I did all of my marking on Turnitin, so there's actually a lot of stuff there that you can use to um, help improve for next time. Um, uh, when you open up the, the Turnitin, when you go into your submission, you just open it up um, and you'll be able to see comments in the actual body of the essay. There are highlighted sections, 
drag and drop comments, also explicit comments added to those drag and drop comments. Um, uh, uh, there uh, uh, is a specific comment section that I've put um, quite detailed comments about the story, the report, the written expression, um, the um, uh, your research, etc. And there's also the rubric section as well. So you've got three different areas in Turnitin in that you can look for explicit information. And if you print up your um, your paper, it gives you a full detailed report of all those sorts of things. So you can really um, understand how I marked the work and, and what you can do for next time if you want to improve. But the bottom line is there is a lot of information there for you. Um, uh, I, I use Turnitin because I find it really, it, it makes it easier for me to give you as much feedback as possible. And it also makes it a kind of a transparent um, system that is, is pretty uniform across the board. So my advice is take that advice, use it um, uh, to develop your, your skills. Uh, because certainly with, with this particular project, um, you know, uh, uh, using digital media, using technology, being able to write clearly and persuasively and to research information aren't just things that are going to be good to get you a pass in this class, but they're really important when you become a teacher and you're trying to put together projects um, for kids. Uh, for example, I'm currently doing a project with some, some kids where we're developing a web page where they've got you know, uh, podcasts and vodcasts. And so this is, you know, this is, this is exactly the kind of stuff that we're doing at the moment. And, you know, having to, to write up the justification for these sorts of programs and connecting it to the, uh, the curriculum and um, uh, is something I have to do, is information that I have to provide to the principal. So, you know, really use this, things like these assignments and the feedback that you get for them um, to help you develop your craft as teachers because it's a really important skill that you can get from it. But that's all I'll say for the time being because um, there are a lot of comments on your report. So, you know, take the information that I've given you. Um, uh, uh, um, again, I really appreciate the effort that you have put in there and I wish you all the very best for your uh, final exams. Thank you.